Okay, uh, hello and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar uh, conducted by ACCA for the financial management exam that is uh, commonly regarded as FMR, F9. Uh, before formally starting this webinar, what uh, I'm going to do is that uh, firstly, I will give you a brief introduction regarding what exactly this webinar is all about because uh, there are many people who are messaging with uh, curiosity that what exactly we are going to cover in this and what uh, do we plan to do in this particular webinar. So initially I will firstly brief you regarding what are our plans in this particular webinar, guide you how to discuss question and answers with me. And then we will formally start this. Uh, it would just take uh, three, four minutes for a brief discussion, okay? Now this webinar, as we all know, is related to financial management, commonly regarded as F9 exam. Before starting this webinar, I would uh, like to specifically thank uh, ACCA for giving me this opportunity to arrange this webinar. And uh, believe me, this is gonna be very helpful for students because what happens is that uh, students are about to give exam. And before the exam, they just need uh, a brush up of their concepts. They just need uh, a quick revision. They just need uh, on how to get the tips and tricks and some important areas. So these webinars in the past have usually been proven to be very helpful for students and uh, we would also request you to give feedback after the end of the webinar that whether uh, you people are finding these webinars good or not okay now as we all know with respect to financial management that in financial management exam there are basically six core areas okay the first core area is basically called investment appraisal a usual part of uh, section c question okay the second core area weighted average cost of capital commonly regarded as VAC. okay the third core area, core area business finance are commonly regarded as sources of finance, okay? Next core area, that is risk management, okay? Uh, dealing with currency risks, uh, dealing with interest rate risks, this is uh, specifically the risk management area, okay? Then area called business, valuations how to value a business uh, this is the fifth core area and the last area yeah is related to working capital management related to inventories receivables and stuff like that so these are basically considered to be the core area of F9 financial management exam and obviously people are preparing these so they might be familiar with this okay that uh, these are the core areas of the financial management exam okay. now as far as the webinars what exactly are we going to these webinars okay now before starting this webinar i would firstly like you all to understand some basic stuff that how things are gonna proceed Now, since this webinar is being conducted online, when
and online classes being considered or conducted, you must be aware that uh, there are three things which must be perfect accurate. First, you must be able to clearly <coughs> listen to the tutor, like whatever I'm speaking, you are able to hear me, number one. Number two, you are able to see my video. Sometimes there is a, a problem in connectivity at uh, students and so they say that we have paused the video okay. like uh, clearly, like I'm here with all of these things. So, because obviously when I will be solving the questions, it is very important that uh, during solving questions, you are able to see what exactly I am doing, okay? Sometimes there can be problems at my end, sometimes there can be problems at your end, but uh, obviously in 99% cases, if problem is at my end, everybody faces problems. Okay, are you able to hear me clearly now? Okay, uh, Okay, sorry for the voice trouble. Uh, I was saying that uh, in case uh, there is uh, any connectivity issue from my end, obviously the ACCA team is uh, also readily available. If they find any distortion from my end, they immediately inform me and we immediately rectify it. However, there are sometimes uh, problems at student center. Okay, so rather than improving the problem at their side what they do is that they constantly send messages in chats i'm unable to hear anything i'm unable to hear everything resulting in disturbance of the other 120 students okay so remember if there is going to be a problem at my end it will be resolved in seconds because team acca my team they are uh, ready with the backups so don't uh, just uh, start flurry of messages if the problem is at your end ensure your connectivity issues everything is perfect okay during the lectures, if you have uh, any questions from me, you might be needing to ask some questions from me, okay? So if you're seeing this uh, go to webinar tab, on this go to webinar tab, there is uh, a portion of questions, okay? There is a portion of questions. So you can go on this questions and uh, when you will go in that questions and uh, ask any question, I will reply you for this question, but obviously not immediately. I may have to complete my statement. I may have to complete uh, the question part which I'm doing. And then when I will say you, okay, now I'm answering questions, you can always ask the question and uh, I will be quite happy to assist. Okay. One last thing. There are many questions at the moment that uh, whether this webinar would be recorded. Okay. So I th think uh, team ACCA has uh, already informed. And if you haven't got that, information let me inform you that the team acca is going to record this webinar and they will share the link with you and uh, when they will share the link i will also forward them to you they will also forward them so you can view this webinar later in recorded form as well okay so no need what we are going to cover in this webinar one last thing okay now obviously there are six topics as i've mentioned the in uh, course of financial management what we are going to do is that in these four days 
in these four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, these four days, we are going to try our best to cover as many topics as we can investment appraisal, weighted average cost of capital, source of finance, business valuation, risk management, working capital. We are trying to cover as many areas as possible, but don't worry. In case, if any particular area is not covered due to shortage of time, obviously, uh, you know that the course is big and we just have 12 hours. So if any area is not uh, particularly covered in this particular uh, four day session, you don't have to worry. We will shortly be making a WhatsApp group and I will share that uh, WhatsApp group link with all of you. You can join that. And the topics which have been missed or we are unable to cover in this particular webinar, I will share with you extra videos of those topics so that you can cover. So you can make sure that if you attend this four day session and you also join the WhatsApp group and the videos two, three, I will share with that. You will cover all six areas in this particular session as well as one or two extra videos which i will provide you so don't worry we will cover all the four areas okay in these core areas coverage remember this is a practice to pass session you know the title and name of this session this is practice to pass we have to practice practice what past exam questions this is practice to pass practicing exam questions so for every topic we will be trying to practice two past exam questions in every class so that at the end of this you are done with at least 10 to 12 past exam questions practice and remember past exam questions practice before the exam helps you sufficiently to clear the exam okay so let's start we are starting with the topic number one today that is investment appraisal and we will try to cover two past paper questions of investment appraisal of recent attempts practice to pass practice and practice okay what you are going to do is that uh, there is uh, a questions portion in this tab there is a file of questions in that you need to download that file i am going to show the question on the screen as well but obviously you must be needing that question on your own reading or for your own reading as well so there is a questions tab as well and sorry handouts tab as well in that handout there is an fm file of day one please download it in the meantime i will share a whatsapp group with all of you and uh, then we will start okay team uh, ACCA and uh, you of that first on the WhatsApp group number one okay number two 
we can discuss uh, question and answers with uh, this particular uh, in this particular group students face uh, some question issues they can ask me they can get help from other students as well okay and thirdly as i said if uh, some topics are left and we are unable to uh, cover that so definitely we will be doing uh, providing you videos of that particular topics as well okay so i think uh, we should uh, now start every one of you has uh, uh, i hope downloaded that uh, day one documents file okay uh, may i request uh, the team acca to please uh, share the whatsapp group link because students are asking Uh, they will shortly be sharing uh, that WhatsApp group link and uh, they have in fact uh, shared as well. So make sure you are joining this group. And no matter if you uh, don't uh, join it immediately as well, you can join it later as well during the break after the session. Uh, I would request the team ACCA to share it uh, every hour so that students who are joining late, they can also uh, get uh, this WhatsApp group link. Uh, let me share it uh, with uh, you guys again because uh, some people are saying they are unable to join it. Okay, from my side also, I have uh, sent the group and uh, those who are saying uh, they cannot join, uh, they need to wait uh, later because uh, almost uh, 50, 60 students have joined the group. So there might be some problem at your end. Try it later. Uh, we, I uh, think, uh, cannot wait further. We should start now. Okay, and don't worry. I will provide it uh, to you later as well in the break and stuff like that. Don't worry about it and stop uh, messaging regarding this WhatsApp group. We will uh, join it later. Okay. So let's start. Okay. So the handout file, uh, which you all might have downloaded, there are questions uh, in this file, uh, which we are going to attempt in our sessions. And remember, I'm going to show these questions on the screen as well, but the file has been shared just to make sure that uh, you guys have a sound idea that uh, we have the questions at uh, our place as well. Okay, so let's start. And uh, as I told you that uh, the topic uh, we are going to do today, that topic is investment appraisal. So the questions uh, we are going to do is uh, mentioned here in the file. And uh, I have just requested students that uh, if uh, WhatsApp group uh, is uh, not joined please wait patiently we have told you multiple times that you will be uh, provided the group link later and if anyone is unable to join we will sort your issue in the break we cannot just spend our 10 15 20 further minutes on this just the whatsapp issue many people have joined if anyone has any problem we will help them out okay so specifically i would request students not to spend uh, send further messages with respect to whatsapp group okay now when you were going the exam 
And obviously your exam is a computer based exam. I'm closing this file. Uh, this file has been provided to you. Okay. When you will go in the exam and uh, you will open your exam. This is how uh, a typical exam structure will look like. This is how a typical exam structure will look like. That uh, the first page of the exam would be like this. Financial management. This is written September, December 2020 exam. Your attempt would be, for example, June 2022. So it will be written June. It will be first instructions on the first page. Get to know your exam. Okay, so you need to read these instructions. Then you will go to page two of the exam. Okay, these are also introduction videos. Uh, you must uh, carefully read all these instructions in the exam. We are not wasting time on this. Okay. Then you can see the third page is the general instructions, answering and navigating, flag for review. This is mentioned, so you will be reading those instructions as well. Then there is another page of instructions that uh, if you need help, you should click the help button, then calculator, where is the calculator, highlight and strike through, working and scratch pads. Every instruction is given. If you want to go in the exam and not spend time reading that, you can always uh, open the past papers on ACCA website and read these instructions. Still instruction screen, see how to copy and paste, uh, symbol, navigator screen, close all, reviewing the exam, every instruction is given. This is the last instruction screen, item review, ending the exam, clicks next to continue to exam summary screen, okay. Then it will come with exam summary screen. Time allowed, you know, what is uh, the time allowed uh, in the exam? So constructive response question is worth 20 marks. All questions are compulsory. Click next to start your exam. You will click next and start your exam. And this is how the question will come. This is question number one of this uh, exam, spine company, okay? This is our typical exam structure with Proctite. It will give you a scenario. After scenario, there will be requirement and requirement with a spreadsheet screen. Obviously, calculation requirements are solved on spreadsheet. Part B, as you can see, it's a theoretical requirement. So it will be a not a spreadsheet, but a word file where you can type your answers. Requirement C is also a non-calculation, therefore it has given a word. I'm not stopping here because we are not going to do this question. Question number two. This is the question which you are going to attempt. This is uh, the question from September, December 20 exam. And in this September, December 20 exam question, we are going to cover investment appraisal to it. We are going to cover investment appraisal to it, okay? So I have opened the exam screen just to tell you and make you all familiar with the thing that what exactly the examination screen looks like and then we will solve it on the spreadsheet okay so this question we are doing it's a past exam question and through this we will be attempting investment appraisal okay let's start i'm reading it if you want to read from the screen you can read from the screen if you want to read from the handout which i have provided to you you can read from the handout okay let's start this scenario relates to four requirements this is a question from september 20 december 20 attempt of acc this scenario relates to four requirements. The scenario has four requirements, okay? Crockett Company is a manufacturing company that has three investment decisions for the company. Crockett Company is a manufacturing company that has three investment decisions for the company, okay? Investment decision one. Investment decision one. Six investment projects are being considered with the following details. Six investment projects are being considered with the following details, okay? So you might be seeing in investment decision one that there are six projects being considered with the following details. Six projects are A, B, C, D, E, F. If you can see project A requires initial outlay of 1 million and the NPV is 390,000, okay? Project B requires initial outlay of 1.5 million or 1,500,000. NPV is not yet known. Project C's initial outlay 750,000, NPV 325,000, D1125 and 590, E1 is 
500 and NPV is 840 and F is 1300 and 635. Okay. Now, out of all six projects, you can see project A, C, D, E, and F. All projects NPV is given, but project B's NPV is not given. Okay. Now, since project B's NPV is not given, you should be familiar and prepared that it will ask you to calculate project B's NPV. C. Project B is expected to generate the following cash flows. Now, project B's cash flows are in year one, year two, year three, year four. The sales income is given 725, 765, 885, and 612,000. And project B's year one, two, three, four cost is given. From this, I got to know that project B has a life of four years. Okay. Project B has a life of four years. And uh, project B has a life of four years. Revenues and cost of all four years are given. Now it's written that project B's cash flows are before allowing for inflation of 4% per year for the sales income and 5% per year for the costs. Now project B's cash flows are before allowing for inflation. They have not yet been inflated. 4% per year on sales income and 5% per year on costs. Okay. Crockett has a nominal cost of capital of 10%. Crockett has a nominal cost of capital of 10%. Obviously, when inflation is there, we know there are two types of cash flows, real and nominal. Real are without inflation, nominal are with inflation. Okay, so when inflation is given, you use a nominal cost of capital that's given. Due to management's reluctance to raise new finance, capital for investment in the above projects is currently restricted to 5 million. Capital is restricted to only 5 million. Capital restricted to 5 million means we are facing rationing as well. Capital rationing as well. Rationing, shortage, only 5 million is available. Projects A, B, D, and F are all independent, but projects C and E are mutually exclusive. A, B, D, F are all independent, but C and E are mutually exclusive. All of the above projects are divisible and none can be delayed or repeated. Okay, so... All these projects are divisible and none can be delayed. Okay. So let's basically first gather some data. As you can see in this Crockett Company question, I'm just uh, taking some data for the purpose of uh, ease of understanding. There are six projects with us. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, uh, to save time, you saw I directly copied uh, the data from the question rather than typing. This is allowed in the exam. You can do this. Copy the data from the question and copy it on your spreadsheet to save time. Okay. So basically, what is happening here is that uh, there are six projects under consideration and all projects uh, NPV and uh, all projects investment has been given to you okay b's uh, data is not yet known okay go back to the question now project b is expected to generate the following annual cash flows we have got the cash flows of uh, project b year one two three four seven twenty five seven sixty five eighty five six one two and cost 145 168 20294 b's cash flows are before taking account of inflation of four percent per year on sales income and and 5% per year on costs. Okay. Nominal cost of capital is 10%. Capital for investment in the above projects is currently restricted to 5 million. Okay. Capital available is restricted to 5,000 or 5 million. Okay. Capital available is restricted to 5 million or 5,000. Okay.
and uh, a b d and f are independent c and e are mutually exclusive all projects are divisible okay so one last thing all projects are divisible and c and e are mutually exclusive okay all projects are divisible and c and e are mutually exclusive okay this is uh, what the information was i have completed the investment decision one c i have completed the investment decision one that uh, the question told me that crocker is a manufacturing company it has three investment decisions investment decision one six projects under consideration from uh, abcdef one project npv was not given then these cash flows were given and the projects are divisible and mutually exclusive okay investment decision two a number of crocker's employees have a company car okay a number of crocker's employees have a company car the entire company car fleet is now due for renewal in the past. It has been replaced every four years. Management are not sure if this is the optimum length of time and feel that other replacement cycles, such as every three years or five years, should also be considered. So number of Crockett's employees have a company car. Entire fleet is due for renewal, has been replaced every four years. Management are not sure this is the optimum length. Feel that other replacement cycles, such as every three years or five years, should also be considered. This is investment decision two and investment decision three the management of crockett are considering the financial viability of another project but as yet no detailed financial information is available to perform an npv appraisal the investment decision three is that the management of crockett are considering financial viability of another project but no detailed information is available to perform an npv appraisal one of the reasons for this is that the various cash flows will be subject to a number of different rates of of inflation that are very uncertain at present for example the selling price inflation may be no more than two percent per year whereas material cost could be four to six percent the general rate of inflation is expected to differ from both of these management are not sure whether appraisal could be performed by simply ignoring the inflation altogether now considering this investment decision three read the first line the management of crockett are considering financial viability of another project but no information is available to perform NPV. No information is available. One of the reasons is that various cash flows will be subject to a number of different rates of inflation, which are uncertain. Selling price will be 2%, material cost 4 to 6%, general inflation will differ. Management are not sure whether appraisal could be performed. Note the 5 million capital constraint outlined with investment decision one applies to that investment decision only and not to investment decision two and three a very important note you see that five million capital was restricted in investment decision one the note states it applies to that investment decision only and not to investment decisions two and three that means when making any decision regarding investment decision two and three the five million constraint does not need to be considered okay this ends the data Now, what happens with the requirements? Requirement A, for investment decision one, only focus on investment decision one. Calculate the net present value of project B. We have to calculate the net present value of project B, four marks. And given the capital constraint, calculate the optimum investment combination and resulting NP. So first you need to Calculate the NPV of B for max. Given the capital constraint, calculate the optimum combination six marks. Ten marks is this requirement, and read requirement again. This is for you would be wasting your time if you are looking at requirement because this requirement is clearly mentioned in one. Only focus on investment decision one. Calculate the NPV of project B. Okay, and given the capital constraint, calculate the optimum investment combination. Okay, I will only look at investment decision one and solve this requirement. Since this is a calculation requirement, the spreadsheet will be provided to you in the exam, as you can see. And if it would be a theoretical requirement, then only a word file would be given. 
okay so let's start okay just a quick recap of things when you're talking about the section of investment appraisal investment appraisal section can ask you to calculate npv can ask you to calculate irr can ask you to calculate gross return on capital employed and can ask you to calculate payback this is what your financial management course states you can be asked to find npv irr gross and payback then you can be asked to undergo a lease or buy decision you can be asked to undergo an asset replacement decision and you may be asked to undergo a capital rationing decision okay this is the whole investment appraisal of your syllabus and finally you can be asked to perform sensitivity analysis and probability analysis now if we talk about this question this question is covering a very important area it's firstly asking you to calculate npv of project b and then it has stated that capital is ration to 5 million 5 million is available shortage make the optimum investment schedule now when you might have studied the optimum investment schedule in uh, npv during your studies in capital rationing decision we have to make an optimum combination there are two types of projects sometimes projects are divisible and sometimes they are indivisible divisible means they can be taken in proportions 50 percent 60 percent 70 percent and indivisible means can only be taken in full never in proportions okay so in this question the capital is ratio to 5 million it's asking for optimum combination investment and projects are divisible okay so we will perform both of these firstly for investment decision one, we are going to calculate the NPV of project B and then optimum investment combination. Okay, again, saving time. I will copy data from the question. I'm doing the first part. Calculating the NPV of project. Okay, let's start uh, calculating the NPV of project. Let's start calculating the NPV of project. Look at the data. Project B is expected to generate the following cash flows. Sales is given 725, 765, 885, and 612. And cost is given 145, 168, 202, and 94. Okay. So in the next line, Project B's cash flows are before taking account of inflation of 4% per year for sales income, 5% per year for cost. Crockett has a nominal cost of capital of 10%. Okay, we will calculate NPV of project B. Now, if we calculate NPV of project B, first we should make the columns. There is a four year life, so we will make zero, one, two, three, and four. Four year life, so we will make columns zero one two three four and we all know with respect to npv because appraisal is usually believed to be the easiest areas of financial management we will record all the inflows and outflows we will record all the inflows and outflows okay now if we talk about project b 
Firstly, Project B requires some investment. Firstly, Project B requires some investment. Investment is usually conducted at year zero and it's an outflow. So what is the investment being done in Project B? 1,500. So we will record negative 1,500. This is an outflow. This is an outflow. Investment of 1,500. Okay. Once we get the investment figure, which is uh, basically believed to be an outflow. Then we start recording our inflows. So what are our inflows? As you can see in the question, there are some sales and there are some costs. So sales are 725, 765, 885 and 612. So I will write uh, 725, it's in year one inflow. Then 765 inflow. Then 885 and 612. 885 and 612. Okay, this is sales. And then project B is incurring some costs. Cost is an outflow. So what are the costs uh, in year one, two, three, four, one, four, five, one, six, eight? These are outflow. One, four, five, negative. Negative, one, six, eight. Negative, two, zero, two. Negative, 94. One, four, five, one, six, eight, two, zero, two, and 94. Okay. If there are any further cash inflows and outflows, you must record them. But at the moment, it seems there are no further cash inflows and outflows. Investments and PV has to be computed. The life is four years, so zero, one, two, three, four. Investment was 1,500. It's always at year zero, so negative 1,500. We got sales and then we got costs. Now, if you continue just like that, there will be a big problem. Okay. Because the question states that Project B's cash flows are before allowing for inflation of 4% per year on sales income and 5% per year on costs. Project B's cash flows are before allowing for inflation of 4% per year for sales income and 5% per year for costs. So as far as this uh, particular question is concerned, it's uh, a significant thing that uh, you are asked that project B's cash flows are before taking account of inflation, 4% per year sales and 5% per year for costs, we have to inflate them. Let's inflate the sales because it's 4% per year for the sales. So year one sales is 725. Pay attention to the working. You can show the working separately or you can show the workings in these cells as well. Year one revenue is 725, right? They are before inflation of 4% per year. So in year one, inflation is 4% per year. Would inflationary impact come one time? Yes, so you should inflate it by 4% per year. So one time inflation, either you can increase it by 4% and add it or directly multiply it with 104% because if you multiply by 104%, it becomes 104% increases by 4%, okay, 754. Similarly, year two figure is 765. Pay attention to the working piece. Year two figure is 765. Okay, if you know the formulas in the cells, uh, you better see it if you don't know it because you can get the information clearly. Now year two figure is 765. It's before taking account of inflation. It's before taking account of inflation. Okay. But now it's year two figure. Inflation is 4% per year. So if you multiply it with 104%, this just brings the inflation back one time because you increase it by 4%. 4% was per year. Since it's in year. Uh, 
32 you need to inflate it by 104 percent two times so into 104 percent into 104 percent the value would be 827.424 either you can do this i'm opening it again 765 obviously four percent per year so you need to apply inflation two times because it's year two in year one we applied one time in year two four percent per year per year Okay, so when inflation needs to be applied in year two, it's 4% per year. So we have to apply 4% per year two times. So either you can do is uh, into 1.04 into 1.04, or what you can do is, please see at the screen, into 1.04 power two. Because if you do into 104% power two, it takes the inflation to two times. 827 again okay please pay attention now year three figure is 885 year three figure is 885 so it's 885 is before taking account of inflation now inflation on sales is four percent per year so to get to year three four percent per year means you need to inflate it by four percent three times into 1.04 104% into 1.04 104% into 1.04 104% three times this gets the figure of 995.5 or what you can do is 885 into 1.04 into 1.04 into 1.04 rather doing this 885 into 1.04 power 3 brings the inflationary impact three times same value and similarly year four figure is 612 before taking account of inflation it's four percent per year so to get to year four we need to inflate it four times because it's four percent per year so 1.04 power four 715.9 okay just a second pause any questions with respect to inflation you can ask then i will move to cost Okay, so the questions are before inflation means what from Salman Abdul Rahman? Before inflation means inflation hasn't been considered. Okay. Uh, Fazan, your question is a very basic question how much zeros? Okay, so obviously I'm ignoring zeros. So 725, 754, 827, they're without zeros. Okay, Salman Abdul Rahman, your question again is it yearly inflation? It's clearly mentioned 4% per year. So what does per year means? It's obviously every year. Okay. Fatma, I am unable to understand your question because you have just written sir. So what is your question? Okay. 
now let's uh, just move towards cost. Let's move towards cost. Now, cost in year one was 145. Cost in year one was 145. And it was before taking account of inflation. Inflation was 5% per year. So for year one, you need to inflate it by 5% one time into 105%. This makes it 152. For year two, the cost was 168. Okay, but cost inflation is 5% per year. So to go to year two, you need to inflate it by 5% two times, either into 1.05, 1.05. Okay, or what you can do is into 1.05 power, Two. 185. Third is 202 before inflation. Okay. So to incorporate inflation, we need to inflate it 5% per year three times into 1.05 into 1.05 into 1.05 or power three. And year four is negative 94. 5% per year. So to make it 5% per year, it's four years so into 1.05 power four. Okay, this I have inflated the cost figures. Any questions with respect to cost? Okay, Aisha, as far as your question is concerned, this is a, a mathematical technique. If you want to increase something by 10%, either you take 10% and do addition in the previous figures till you get the same answer, or you directly multiply it to 110%. So 110% means you are increasing it by 10%. Both approaches give the same answer. Okay, so once we have uh, investment and sales and cost, there was no information apart from these cash flows from Project V because uh, if there had been any other cash flows, we would have taken them as well, but only these cash flows were given. So now what we will do is when you are sure that there are no other cash flows, you net them all to get net cash flows. So net cash flows of uh, year zero seem to be 1500 negative and uh, for year one we will take the difference Once you get uh, the net cash flows, uh, you multiply these net cash flows by the discount factor. Pay attention, since you have applied inflation in revenue and costs, now if inf inflation is applied, the rule states you have to use a nominal cost of capital. So nominal cost of capital is 10%. So from the table provided in the exam, we will use uh, the discount factor 10%, year zero factor is one. Year one factor from the table is 0.909 then 0 0.826 for year two, then 0 0.751 and 0 0.683. Okay. okay, net cash flows when they will be multiplied by discount factor, it will give you present value. Net cash flows when it will be multiplied by discount factor, it will give you present value. So multiply them 1500 into one. And so when you have the present values, you need to net them all to get the NPV. To net them all, we will sum all cells, sum of investment cell that is uh, 
E23 till I23. All these cells will be net off and NPV will be 560 positive. This is the NPV of project B, our four marks requirement is done. You can copy this. If you have any questions you can ask, then we'll move towards requirement two. Okay, uh, Mohammed Abbas Khan, as far as your question is concerned, isn't it better to show inflated sales and cost in working? There is no standard pattern. Whatever is better, it's for you. If you are comfortable with them, please use that. If you are comfortable with something else, it doesn't matter about that. Saiful Khan, all workings. Okay, please copy it quickly so that we can move to the next part. Uh, Hassan Mohammed Ashraf, this is the working which I have shown. This is sufficient. Ahmed Hayat, uh, you can ask Team ACC regarding it when it will be uploaded. Yes, Noman, I will share the files of these solved questions. Eman, I will answer your question when we will be doing part C of this question. Don't worry. Aliyan Heather, if uh, my NPV is 560.4 and yours is 561, it uh, is not uh, any problem. Yes, Aman, you can do that. Amna, there is no requirement of decimal places, two places, three places, rounding off, everything is allowed. Hamza, this has been told by CC multiple times. They will share recordings. Don't worry about it. The WhatsApp group has become a very serious issue in today's class because as I'm seeing 70 people have joined and uh, three or four people are saying that uh, it's not working. So I don't know what's the problem. So that's why I told that uh, it's better that we leave this issue at uh, the end.
okay let's move towards requirement b now if anyone is unable to copy all stuff i will share this file on the whatsapp group uh, after the class is over don't worry about it i will share this excel file with you okay Okay, now as far as requirement A2 is concerned, again copy that from the question that uh, given the capital constraint calculate the optimum investment combination and resulting NP. okay now if you look at the question please pay attention the question was that uh, there are five projects under consideration a b c d e Okay, five projects under consideration, A, B, C, D, E, F, sorry, six projects under consideration. The initial outlay was uh, 1,000, 1,500, 750, 1,125, 1,850, and 1,300, and NPVs were given. Initial outlay was given and NPV was given, okay? For project B, the NPV was not yet known, but now we can remove this. We now know that the NPV of project B is 560, right? I hope there is no confusion with respect to this. That uh, if you read the question initially, six projects A, B, C, D, E, F were under consideration. Outlays were given and with outlays npvs were given but uh, project b NPV was not yet known so we have now found it 560 okay because the cash flows were given now an important thing is that only 5000 is available with the company now if you see company is facing capital rationing if you see companies facing capital rationing how if you just see there are six projects under consideration a b c d e f all have positive NPV. There are six projects A, B, C, D, E, F. All have positive NPV. So basically, the liking would be that we should opt all projects. What do you think? If there are six projects, all are having positive NPV, we should opt all. But just check here. That project A requires funds of 1000, then B requires 1500, C requires 750, D requires 1125, E requires 1850, F requires 1300. So if we add them all, the outlay required is uh, sum of uh, B29 to B34. You require 7525. You require 7525. That's a problem. That A, B, C, D, E, F. All projects have a positive NPV, right? 
so your wish would be taking all projects if a company has all opportunities with positive NPV to take off but the funds required are only 5,000 and you need 7525. This is what we mean that we face capital rationing. This is what we mean we are facing capital rationing. And in capital rationing, you should accept one thing. It is not possible to take all projects. In capital rationing, it is not possible to take all projects. How can you take all projects? You have only 5,000 available. But the projects which are under consideration they require 7525 so you cannot take all projects in that case you have to make the best combination that is called the optimum combination that's what it is asking that calculate the optimum combination or best combination okay now in our f9 financial management syllabus it states that when projects are divisible when projects are divisible and you are facing shortage to make the optimum combination, what you should do is you should calculate the profitability index of each option, which is NPV over investment. Okay, this uh, is uh, what uh, financial management studies say that when you are facing shortage of cash, see, I'm facing shortage of cash. I require 7525 to fulfill all projects. I only have 5,000. This is shortage. I cannot take all projects. I cannot take all projects, right? Because taking all projects requires 7525. I don't have that. So I need to make a best combination that is called the optimum combination. How will you make it? Our studies say that if projects are divisible, it's important to find the profitability index of each option. How do you get the profitability index of each option and PVO investment? So find the profitability index of each option. Project A, profitability index, NPV is 390. Over investment is 1000, 0 0.39. Profitability index of B, NPV 560. Over investment 1500, 0 0.37. Profitability index of C, NPV 325 over investment 750, 1433. Profitability index of D, NPV 590 over investment 1125, 152. Profitability index of E, NPV 840 over investment 18145. And profitability index of F, NPV 635 over investment. You get the profitability index of each. Okay. Once you have the profitability index of each option, once you have the profitability index of each option, the next choice is the next step is you must rank all projects based on their profitability index so which is having the highest profitability index 0.52 first then second then third then fourth then fifth and then Sixth. So the scenario is calculate the optimum investment combination. I gave you background upon, about optimum investment combination that what was the background about optimum investment combination. The background was that uh, there are six projects under consideration. One project's NPV was not known, so we calculated it. So when six projects under consideration, all have positive NPV, we should go towards all of them. But the problem is we don't have enough cash. All projects require an investment of 7,525. We only have 5,000. This is shortage. Except this, you can never, ever 
take all projects in this case it's not possible okay so you have to make an optimum best combination optimum means best for divisible projects this is done via profitability index and pure investment it's basically npv to investment ratio so you calculated profitability index of all and pure investment and on that you did ranking now once ranking is made you know which is the first one which is the second one you now should make an optimum combination how pay attention put three earnings projects investment npv three earnings projects investment and npv projects are a b c d e f okay ranks are fifth sixth fourth first third second inject funds in this order keeping in mind the investment limit is available only 5000 keeping in mind the investment limit available is only 5000 okay let's start what is the first rank project d what is the first rank project d so inject funds in d what is the first rank project d so inject funds in d how much funds d require d requires 1125 inject 1125 since we have 1125 at the moment we have 5000 so we need d first it requires 1125 we have that inject 1125 since you have injected whole amount in d since you have injected whole amount in d you will get whole npv what is the whole npv of d okay repeat when optimum combination is to be made projects are divisible find profitability index of all assign ranks after ranks you know which is the first one which is the second one then inject funds in that order how to make the optimum combination three columns projects investment npv six projects ranks are there inject funds in this order keeping in mind the investment amount is five thousand so first rank is d i will put money in d d requires one one two five out here do i have one one two five yes i will put in d okay i will put in d. full amount has been invested so full NP. okay now what is the second rank f put money in f how much f requires how much f requires f requires 1300 since you have 1300 keep an eye on the amount 5000 was available 1125 was spent in d now f requires 1300 do you have 1300 yes you have 1300 put 1300 since you have invested full amount in f you get full npv what is that 635 keep an eye on the amount 5000 was available 1125 went in the first one 1300 went in the second one what is the third rank e what is the third rank e how much e requires e requires 18500 do you have 18500 with you yes 5000 1125 was spent 1300 was spent you still have money so inject 1850 in e have you invested full amount in e yes full amount means you will get full npv that is What is the fourth one? C. You injected first uh, in D, then second in uh, F, then in uh, E, and the fourth rank is C. C requires how much? 750. C requires how much? 750. You might have had 750, but the problem is it's mentioned C and E are mutually it's mentioned c and d are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive means they cannot be taken together 
If two projects are mutually exclusive, it means they cannot be taken together. So since you have already taken E as the third rank, even if you have money for C, they are mutually exclusive. You have taken E, you cannot opt for C. You cannot opt for C because both of them are mutually exclusive. Okay, mutually exclusive means you cannot take both of them together. So if you have taken E, the third one, you can never go for C even if you have money because they're mutually exclusive, cannot be taken together, ignore C. Now, after fourth one, where you should go? Fifth, A. A requires how much investment? 1,000. A requires how much investment? 1,000. But if you see, you had 5,000 with you, the first one was occupied by D. 1125 was taken by D. Then you went to F. 1300 was taken by F. Then 1850 was taken by E. So just keep an eye. 5000 cash was available. 1125 was taken by the first one. 1300 by the second one. 1850 by the third one. So you are only left with 725. A requires investment of 1000. A requires investment of 1000. You don't have 1000. You only have 725. Since they are divisible, divisible means can be taken in pieces. You can invest 725 in A, but 725 invested out of required 1000 means you only took 72.5% proportion of A. So in A, you can only do investment of 725, but investing 725 out of remaining 1,000, available 1,000, required 1,000, means you only took 72.5% share of A. So you won't get full NPV of 390 from A because you haven't invested full money. You have invested 72.5% money, 72.5% share is taken, so you will only get 72.5% NPV. And 72.5% NPV is 282.75. All cash is finished. So for B, the sixth one, no money left, no investment, no NPV. So how much NPV you are getting by investing this 5,000 add all, this becomes two, three, four, seven point seven five. Okay, this ends your six mark requirement as well. That calculate the optimum combination. We have made the optimum combination, and we have also found the resultant NPV. The resultant NPV is two, three, four, seven. Okay, copy it. Any questions? Please ask. Uh, what is the ranking of uh, project E is better than C? So we will take that. No, Nishika, in indivisible, there is another approach. Uh, Jawad, you can link the cells as well as you can uh, calculate the value and put in cell, but in that case, you need to show the workings.
uh, Fazan, uh, this sounds a very strange question that uh, do we have to show working of optimal plan having lower NPV? No, it's not required. Salman Abdurrahman, mutually exclusive means both projects cannot be taken together. Yes, in Indivisible, we use a trial and error method, and those who have difficulty in that, they can contact me after the class. We will ensure a solution for them. We will provide a video to them as well. Don't worry. Amir. Uh, Ali, this is not possible that a question which has been made of divisible, you can just change that question and make it indivisible. Obviously, it's a separate thing. Hamza, I apologize. There are hundreds of questions, so you can also retype your question. Yes, uh, Sanola, if you're showing workings in a cell, no need to show working separately. Sanola, what you have written is correct, that you don't have to show working separately. Yes, Hassan, uh, in five, 10 minutes, uh, we will be doing that. Which functions are allowed, which are not? There is an examiner report regarding these workings. You can read that. Yes, Ishad, you're right. Okay, there are uh, obviously people who want uh, that uh, an area which is uh, problematic for them that is uh, discussed out of context as well. Uh, I really apologize, it is not possible because uh, then we won't be able to cover all areas of the syllabus if we uh, start uh, answering each and every individual query. But uh, don't worry, that's what uh, the purpose of the WhatsApp group is. That's what the purpose of uh, making the group and sharing the personal numbers is. That uh, in case uh, you find difficulty in any area and by chance that is not covered in these uh, four bases, obviously you also know that it's very difficult to complete the whole syllabus in just 12 hours, okay? So if it is not covered, you can always contact me. We will be able to assist you uh, out of the box regarding that. So there is absolutely 
no need to worry regarding this particular issue. And uh, also it is a request, uh, don't message that wait for five minutes, we are copying, or please, we are in a hurry, go to the next question. Okay, obviously there are 120 students in this webinar. I cannot follow the instructions of one particular student who says that uh, uh, increase the pace or reduce the pace. The class will be at a standard pace and uh, obviously I'm conducting, so it's better. What I like, it should be that accordingly. Okay, now uh, we will do the next parts uh, of this question. And uh, after doing these parts, uh, we will go for a short break for water, tea, and uh, prayers, and then come back, okay? Now, requirement B of this question is, for investment decision two, explain the approach Crockett should use to determine the optimum replacement cycle. This is four marks and this is relating to investment decision two only. Okay, so you don't need to see anywhere else, only focus on investment decision two. Explain the approach Crockett should use to determine the optimum replacement cycle. Okay, uh, I have the decision two in front of me, just to uh, read the investment decision two. A number of Crockett's employees have a company car. The entire company car fleet is now due for renewal. And in the past, it has been replaced every four years management are not sure if this is the optimum length of time and feel that other replacement cycles such as every three or five years should also be considered this is only investment decision two data nothing else so requirement b is relating to investment decision two which states that entire company car fleet is now due for renewal in the past it has been replaced every four years but management are not sure that this is the optimum length feel that other replacement cycles such as every three years or five years should also be considered okay Requirement B is for investment decision to explain the approach Crockett should use to determine the optimum replacement cycle. I will not write the complete answer because you can read the examiner answers. I will just write the point. In absent replacement decision, what students are taught? That when you have to determine optimum replacement cycle, cash flows are not comparable. Not comparable means what is the issue? Uh, you are thinking to replace every three year, four years, five years so cash flows won't be comparable because uh, three years four years five years all have different lengths all have different lengths one is of three years one is of four years one is of five years so when cash flows are of different lengths they are not comparable so to make comparison like with like an approach called equivalent annual cost. You might have heard regarding it. EAC is considered. What EAC does is, EAC is NPV over discount factor. 
it brings options of varying lengths on one level esc brings options of varying lengths onto one level like options of varying lengths means one option is of three years one is of four years one is of five years one is of two years so all these separate options are not comparable so to make comparison like with like we use an approach called equivalent annual cost npv over discount factor and option having lowest esc is opted this is what you should explain in requirement b that explain the approach crockett should use to determine optimum cycle so you should write that in order to determine optimum cycle the options will be always of varying lengths like companies also considering four year five or three years this will make sure comparison is not like with like so we use an approach called equivalent annual cost esc that's npv over discount factor the purpose of esc is to bring options of varying lengths onto each equal level so that comparison is like with like and an option having lowest is opted these are just the sample points you can write uh, note that and i would advise you to read the official examiner answer as well on how to elaborate these points to get a four mark answer obviously you can never write the complete examiner answer but you will just read and get knowledge regarding elaboration okay any questions in this Yes, a summit is allowed. And Amir, I have told uh, in the past as well that I will share these files. Uh, uh, no need to worry regarding that. So Ahmed Michal, discount factor and annuity factor, there is no difference in that apart from similar cash flows and uneven cash flows. There is no difference. Last part now. It's a very easy part, theoretical part, and then we will go for a break, short break. Now, I literally uh, consider this question as a very mark scoring question calculation wise as well as theory wise look at parts part c is in relation to investment decision three describe two approaches for dealing with inflation and provide a reason recommendation as to which approach crockett's management should follow now in the six marks there are two things describe two approaches for dealing with inflation and provide a reason recommendation as to which approach management should follow. This is a very mark scoring theoretical question because you might have studied that there are two approaches of dealing with inflation one is called nominal approach and one is called real approach there are two approaches of dealing with inflation nominal approach real approach nominal approach incorporates inflation in cash flows and uses nominal discount rate that is discount rate having inflation whereas real approach does not incorporate inflation and uses real discount rate that is discount rate 
not having inflation okay explain two approaches of dealing with inflation So there are two approaches to deal with inflation nominal real nominal means inflation is not accounted for in cash flows uh, sorry nominal means inflation is accounted for in cash flows and we use nominal discount rate discount rate is also adjusted for inflation and real which does not incorporate inflation and uses real discount rate not having inflation so what first requirement was explain two approaches of dealing with inflation I recommend which management should follow obviously you can write that as far as easiness is concerned people will favor a real approach as far as easiness is concerned people will approach a real approach no need to incorporate inflation use real discount rate okay but in this particular question selling price variable cost everything has different rates of inflation and when everything has different rates of inflation it is very important to get a fair analysis of npv that all inflationary impacts are considered to get a fair view of NPV. So it's very, very better that when inflation is available, the preferred approach should be nominal. I would also suggest you that for this also, read the examiner answer, okay, to get a fair idea. We have uh, completed our first past paper question. It was a very marks scoring question, 10 marks for calculation, then four marks how to take decision regarding asset replacement via EAC, and then two approaches of inflation and which it should use, okay? We are taking a 15 minute break for prayers and uh, tea coffee, and then we will meet with the next question, okay? If you have any question with respect to that in this question, in the meantime, you can ask. Uh, Hassam, I told that since inflation is a real world factor and everything is subject to inflation, and it's better we use uh, nominal approach. And Hamza both give same answer, but obviously if uh, selling price is not inflated, variable cost is not inflated, then the person doing appraisal would not know what the revenue and what the variable cost is expecting. The final answer is the same, but sales and cost values in the
Okay, so we are now resuming and uh, before resumption, there are some questions asked by students. Let me address them. Hassam, yes, uh, your statement is correct. And obviously the break was not only for you guys, it was for me as well. I also had to pray and uh, have a cup of uh, tea. So I was not there as well. So many question marks. Uh, Sanaullah, uh, I can't answer you uh, this question that till when the recording will be ready because it's uh, uh, to be announced by Team ACC when you will get the recording. And uh, Aisha, what are your questions? I said it's better you contact me via WhatsApp uh, because uh, this is a very subjective question that which section is more important. We will talk about it. Uh, and but here I told you that whatever you have missed, uh, uh, we will share with you the files uh, on the WhatsApp group, so no need to worry. Now, uh, the webinar question asking during this three hour webinar, it should be answered only here on the GoToWebinar tab. Now, if you will ask questions on WhatsApp group as well, and you will ask questionnaire as well, I cannot look at uh, both of these places. So it's a request, please start, uh, uh, please uh, ask questions there. Now, I think in our group, approximately 90 students have joined, but still there are a few students who are having problems. So what I'm going to do is now, uh, I have sent you all my WhatsApp number, okay? So you just drop me a message that uh, you are unable to join the group. I will add you directly, okay? But do it after the class, okay? Now, during the break, I was just uh, going through some of the WhatsApp messages, okay? In these WhatsApp messages, Uh, a student basically uh, copied uh, the theoretical stuff which I wrote. The theoretical stuff which I wrote. And uh, others were making uh, fun of him that uh, this is too short, you will just score one mark. So obviously, uh, I think some people are expecting that this is a full-fledged class, whereas this is a prepare to pass webinar, a revision sort of class, okay? In a full-fledged class, uh, we will type the complete answer. And after typing the complete answer, we will give to the students. Those who have studied from us in regular classes, they know. But obviously in a revision class, these are just points. You have to elaborate them. And that is why I told you all that once you have gathered these points, elaborate it and write the answer. And I also recommended you to use the examiner's answers, read the examiner answers, okay? because you need to at least uh, mention four, five, six lines to gain four marks, okay? Obviously, whatever I have written of normal and integral, these are also just points. You need to draft them properly. For that, you need the examiner answer as well. This will help you in detail. Let's move to the next question now. Uh, 
Uh, now the next question we are doing, that's related to September, December 2021. And this is the latest past paper published by ACCA. So I have uh, opened this particular scenario. And uh, once I open that, there is the same firstly instruction screen. And uh, you read the instructions, you read the instructions, you read the instructions, go down. You get the questions. And since we are doing investment appraisal, this is a question Hawker company. I will show it on the screen as well. And uh, you can also see it from the handout which you have. September, December, 2021 question. Okay, so I'm reading this question. Uh, please pay attention. The question states, Hawker company is about to replace its existing delivery vehicle with a new design of vehicle that offers greater fuel economy. It estimates that replacing existing vehicle will save running costs of 2000 per year. Okay. Hawker is about to replace its existing delivery vehicle with a new design of vehicle. So company is about to replace its vehicle with a new vehicle that offers greater fuel economy. Okay. And it estimates that replacing the vehicle will save running costs of 2000 per year. So the company is basically trying to replace its vehicle. Company is basically trying to replace its vehicle. Uh, Hamza, I'm surprised. Uh, weren't you attentive? Uh, it was nominal real, which was discussed. So Hawker company is uh, about to replace its existing delivery vehicle with a new design of vehicle. It estimates that replacing existing vehicle will save running cost of 2000 per year. So company plans to replace its vehicle. There are two financing options. So in replacement of vehicle, there are two financing options. Okay. Option one. Option one is vehicle could be purchased for 34,000. You can purchase the vehicle for 34,000 using a bank loan with an after tax cost of borrowing of 4% per year. The vehicle would have a useful life of four years, would have a residual value of 14,000 at the end of that period. Straight line tax allowable depreciation, that is capital allowances is available on the vehicle. The vehicle would be subject to a government CO2 emission tax of 600 at the end of each year of operation. Emission tax expenses are corporation tax deductible. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, option one that uh, vehicle could be purchased for 34,000 using a bank loan with an after tax cost of borrowing of 4% per year. The vehicle would have a useful life of four years, would have a residual value of 14,000. Okay, and straight line tax allowable depreciation is available on the vehicle, like we all know that uh, tax allowable depreciation, also called capital allowances. It's uh, on a straight line basis. So straight line basis means you take the cost 34,000 less the scrap value that is 14,000 over life that is four years. Okay. Okay. And vehicle would be subject to a government CO2 emission tax of 600 at the end of each year. Emission tax expenses are corporation tax de deductible. So emission tax expenses are tax deductible. Okay. This is the option one. Option two, vehicle could be leased for a period of four years for a payment of 6,000 per year payable at the start of each year. 
so vehicle will be leased for four years first option was purchasing the second option was leasing for a period of four years for a payment of six thousand for you payable at the start of the year start of each year means advance the lesser will pay the co2 emission tax we don't have to pay it. the lessor who is giving us the vehicle we are lessee we are taking the lessor will bear the tax this is not our cost Lease payments are corporation tax deductible, hawkers after tax, weighted average cost of capital is 8%, and it pays tax at a rate of 20% one year in areas. Ten marks, calculation requirement, that's why a spreadsheet cell is given. Evaluate whether hawkers should use leasing or borrowing. So at the either you need to decide a company should use leasing, or company should use borrowing. Okay, either company should use leasing or company should use borrowing. Obviously, there are two options. So we need to decide that uh, whether company should use leasing or company should use borrowing. Okay. So if we remember this particular portion that uh, the question is stating for 10 marks whether hawker should use leasing or borrowing. So there are two options that hawker is about to replace uh, uh, its existing delivery vehicle and it's a new design offering uh, greater uh, fuel efficiency. Uh, the replacing existing vehicle will save running cost of 2000 per year. There are two options. The first option is uh, that company can purchase for 34,000 using a bank loan. And the second option is leasing. And straight line tax allowable depreciation is available. Vehicle would be subject to a government tax of 600 at the end of each year. Tax expenses are tax deductible. And option two is leasing. Tax rate is given as well. Okay. So there are two options, and you need to evaluate whether it should use leasing or borrowing. 10 mark requirement. I will answer this requirement. So I'm answering this requirement, whether hawkers should use leasing or borrowing. Now, what does MPV calculation say? That when you have to take decision between leasing or borrowing, borrowing means buying, and you have to take decisions regarding leasing and borrowing, what you need to do is, you have to find NPV of each option. And whichever option is giving the better NPV, you need to choose that, okay? When you are uh, deciding whether to lease or uh, buy. So you need to find NPV of each option and then decide, okay? So, the first option is borrowing and buying. So I will find NPV of option one. After doing this, I will find NPV of option two and then decide which is better. So let's find NPV of option one, pay attention. Now, what is option one? Please pay attention. The vehicle could be purchased for 34,000. So it could be purchased for 34,000 using a bank loan with an after tax cost of borrowing of 4%. Vehicle would have a useful life of four years, would have a scrap value of 14,000. Tax allowable depreciation is available. So tax allowable depreciation, you know, it's capital allowances and it's emission tax of 600. So let's find NPV of option one. There is a four year life, zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay. What things are coming in the buying option? Okay, vehicle you are doing what? Purchasing. So purchasing will result in investment of 34,000. Outflow and flow, outflow negative comes at year zero. Okay, then 
And what does it mention? The vehicle would have a life of four years, would have a scrap value of 14,000 at the end of that period. So at the end of that period, it will be scrapped. Scrap is an inflow. 14,000, positive. Okay. Straight line tax allowable depreciation is available. You know tax allowable depreciation results in tax savings. So you can make a tax allowable depreciation format as well. Your TAD or capital allowances tax savings at 20%. So it's a four year life, one, two, three, four. Every year tax allowable depreciation is how much? Cost less scrap value over life. It's 5,000 each year. And this depreciation of 5,000 each year will reduce profits by 5,000, resulting in tax savings of 20%. 5,000 into 20% is 1,000. So for each year, we will get uh, a tax allowable depreciation of 5,000, resulting in tax savings, but since taxes paid in arrears. So year one benefit is gonna come in year two, year two benefit in year three, year three benefit of 1,000 in year four, and year four benefit in year so for the capital allowances or TAD, it's every year from year two up, benefit two, three, four, and we have to make year five as well. What are the other cash flows? Investment 34,000, life of four years, scrap value 14,000 inflow. Tax allowable depreciation, it's 5,000 each year, which reduces profit, so gives benefit of tax of 1,000 in arrears. Vehicle will be subject to a government CO2 emission tax of 600 at the end of each year. So it's a four year life, right? So at the end of each year, you have to bear an emission tax of how much? 600, negative. Four year life, so four times you have to bear an emission tax of 600. And it states emission tax are tax deductible. What does this mean? Emission taxes are tax deductible. That means this is an outflow. It will reduce your profits by 600, so will result in tax benefit of 600 into 20%, 120 in areas, taxes in areas, right? So 120 in later years. These are all the cash flows mentioned in the question with respect to option one. I can put the information of option one in front of you because there are two options. You need to find NPV of each option. Purchase cost 34,000 outflow, scrap value 14,000 inflow, tax allowable depreciation is straight line 5,000 each year, which reduces profit by 5,000, so reduces tax by 20%, 1,000. Emission tax of 600 outflow each year and they are tax deductible, so they give tax benefit of 20%, 120. No other thing mentioned in option one. Okay, I've written all the five cash flows in option one. If you have any questions with respect to them, please ask. Shaban, it's depreciation, straight line basis. So straight line basis formula for each year depreciation is cost less scrap value over life. So cost was 34,000 less scrap value 14,000 over life, four years. So it's 5,000 each year. So 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 is the tax benefit. Now, if you say that you are getting a benefit of 5,000 in depreciation, so this will reduce your profits by 5,000. And if my profits are reduced by 5,000, Obviously, profits reduced by 5,000 means you have to pay less tax. What is the tax rate? So less tax of 1,000. This is what uh, tax benefit is. Similarly, there is emission cost of 600. Yes, sir, you are on point, Salman. Emission tax is 600 outflow, so it will reduce your profit by 600. Now, if your profit is reduced by 600, obviously, you will get 20% saving. Take it like this. Take it like this. 
your profit is let's suppose 10,000. Take it like this. For example, profit is 10,000. How much tax you have to pay? 20%. 2,000. Let's suppose depreciation came or emission tax came. So how much is the depreciation? 5,000 each year. If 5,000 depreciation came each year, then your profit fell by 5,000 from 10,000 profit due to depreciation profit became 5,000. So now you have to pay 20% tax on 5,000 only. That's 1,000. So you see, depreciation reduced your profit and reduced tax by 1,000. This is what tax benefit is. Amna, your question is, can please it? Uh, I'm not getting. Sonal, if you want to show that way, no problem. What will happen? It will still show the same thing. Kasim, depreciation reduces the profits. If your profit is supposed 10,000, you have to pay 20% tax on that profit of 2,000. Okay? But since depreciation is 5,000 per year, so see your profit from 10,000 became 5,000. Reduced profit means you have to pay 20%, 1,000 reduced tax. So depreciation reduce your tax from 2,000 to 1,000. This is called tax savings. So Sanaullah, there is no problem dear. You can do it that way. So why you want me to change my solution and do according to your way? You can do that way. It's the same thing. Uh, Fazan, you are also asking the same thing that uh, can we do it like this way? Obviously, solution patterns can be different. There is no need to follow the same solution. If you want to do it directly, you can. Uh, Sana, there is nowhere 2,000. In calculation, depreciation is 5,000. And it's giving tax benefit as 20%, 1,000. So this 1,000 we have taken as inflow. Okay. So in option one, these are the five cash flows. Now you should net them all to get net cash flow. So net cash flow is... Thirty four thousand uh, net cash flows need to be multiplied by discount factor. Now, for discount factor, either you can use the VAC of eight percent or you can use the cost of borrowing of 4%, both are allowed. Either you can use the cost of borrowing of 4%, or you can use VAC of 8%, both are allowed. Examiner has clearly mentioned it. Just to make sure that uh, the answer matches with the examiner's answer, I'm using 4% factor here. You can also use the VAC 8%. Okay, the factors are one from the table, 0.962. 
0 0.89, 0 0.855, and 0 0.82. Net cash flows into discount factor gives us present values. And if we net them all, we get NPV of option one. Net all cells. Four double seven. Sorry. It's negative 30,000. Two zero two nine eight negative. You can copy and now ask any questions because uh, I think uh, a very significant issue is uh, regarding the tax allowable depreciation because there are some students which uh, who basically don't uh, know exactly the concept of TAG and depreciation because the majority questions were from three or four students regarding that. So for the sake of their understanding, I will repeat it once again. I just gave this 10,000 profit as a hypothetical figure that, uh, for example, if you say your profits are, let's suppose, uh, how this thousand saving came. The easiest way is that depreciation is 5,000. So it's reduced profit by 5,000 and reduced tax of 20% thousand. Emission tax is 600. It reduced profits by 600, will reduce tax by 20%, 120 benefit. Okay, because tax reduction is a benefit. 5,000 depreciation, reduced profit. So reduced tax by 20%, 1,000 is a tax saving, it's a benefit. Same for emission cost. But hypothetically explaining, let's suppose your profit were 40,000. So in normal circumstances, you have to pay 20% tax on 40,000, that is 8,000. Depreciation of 5,000 each year, right? 5,000 each year as per straight line, will reduce your profit by 5,000. So from 40,000, your profit will become 35,000. And now you have to pay 20% tax on this 35,000, that is 7,000. So see, because of depreciation expense, your tax was becoming 7,000 from 8,000. That means saving of 1,000. This is tax benefit. Yes, one capital allowances is relevant. That's what uh, we've taught in the lectures to you as well. Uh, you need to be attentive uh, regarding uh, lectures. I told you that uh, discount factor can be 4%, discount factor can be cost of capital 8% as well, both are allowed. Just for the sake of matching with examiner's answers, I am using 4%, but you can use 8% as well, no worries in that.
I think those students who didn't have information about TAD, hopefully this uh, write, written material may have helped them to understand the stuff. Ozefa, any information which is published by ACCA, I cannot answer you regarding that, that when it will be published, it's better you contact ACCA. Okay, now we have calculated the NPV of option one. Now, in order to decide which is better, we need to have NPV of option two. And then we will decide which is better now let's uh, read option two the vehicle could be leased for a period of four years for a payment of six thousand per year payable at the start of each year the lessor will pay the co2 tax since i am taking i am the lessee i am not paying emission tax so i won't record it lessor will pay that's his issue i am the lessee Lease payments are tax deductible, so again, you will get tax benefit on that. And hawkers after tax weighted average cost of capital 8%, tax rate is 20% one year in areas. Okay. So option two, when you are finding NPV of option one, record all cash flows of option one. When you are finding NPV of option two, record all cash flows of option two. So machine could be leased for four years for a payment of 6,000 per year, payable at the start of each year. Lessor will pay the CO2 tax. Lease payments are tax deductible. Hawkers after tax cost of capital is 8%. So in option two, you are leasing for four years, right? So again, zero, one, two, three, four, okay? Vehicle could be leased for a period of four years for a payment of 6,000 per year payable at the start of each year. So payment is 6,000 per year. In normal case for four years, 6,000 per year means 6,000 per year, 6,000 each year, 6,000 each year, 6,000 each year. But the problem is they are paid at the start of each year. So 6,000 per year for year one is paid at the start of year one. So you should all remember that in NPV calculations, if some payment is made at the start of each year, that means for year one, the lease payment is made at the start of year one, you should record this outflow in year zero. The year two lease payment at the start of year two should be recorded in year one. The year three lease payment should be recorded in year two and year four lease payment in year three okay uh does everyone know this point that if the question states lease payment are six thousand per year and it's paid at the end of each year so you should record in year one year two year three year four because end of each year means record normally year one lease payment in year one year two lease payment in year two year three lease payment in year three and year four lease payment in year four but if it states that lease payment is at the start of each year so year one lease payment at the start of year one should be recorded in zero. Year two lease payment at the start of year two should be recorded in year one. Year three lease payment at the start of year three should be recorded in two. And year four lease payment at the start of year four should be recorded in three. I won't record the emission tax because that is paid by someone else, not my cost. But lease payments are tax allowable. That means again, these lease payments are tax allowable. They will reduce my profit by Six thousand. It's an outflow, so they will reduce my profits by six thousand, and will give me twenty percent tax benefit. That is one thousand 
200 because they're tax allowable. That means they will reduce my profits by 6,000, resulting in reduction in tax as well of 20%, 1,200. Had the tax been in same year, I would have recorded in one, two, three, four, but since it's in areas, so benefit areas means recorded in two, three, four, and five. We net them all. These are the only two cash flows we get. Net cash flows. Negative 6,000. Negative 6,000. Negative 4,800. Negative 4,800. Negative 4,800. Sorry. 1,200 and 1200 these needs to be multiplied by discount factor again four percent or eight percent both are acceptable to match the answer i'm just using four but in my classes i used eight percent but here just to match using four percent you will get uh, Present values and once you net them all, you will get NPV of option. One eight four double six. Okay, you have NPV of both options. One is giving you negative twenty, and one is giving you negative one eight four double six. So which is better? Company should go for leasing. Okay, you can copy, and uh, if any questions you can ask, I have few questions. Mohammad Arslan. Your question is that uh, borrowing cost is irrelevant and the, the outflow and inflow is irrelevant, not the percentage is irrelevant. So either you take the percentage or you take the cost of capital because that's 4% would have been included in the cost of capital of 8% as well. So that's why both are allowed. Ahmad Hayat, the difference between finance and operating lease is that if uh, maintenance cost, and here maintenance cost is something like emission tax, it's uh, borne by me, let's see, then it's, it's a finance lease. But if it's borne by the lesser, then it's an operating lease. Lessor Aisha is the person who is giving you the machine like the bank and Lessie is the person taking it. Yes, Sanaullah, there is a difference between finance and operating lease and the only difference is that maintenance cost is borne by Lessor in operating lease and by Lessie in finance lease. Yes, maintenance cost is also a tax benefit. Uh, Nabil, your question and answer will be different. If you use 8%, yes, your answer will be different, but your decision will be the same.
Sanola, there is a question in F9 Kaplan kit. The question name is Liminger PLC. So it's better you see that question. Here it was no mentioning of finances or operating lease, only lease were men was mentioned, therefore we use normal lease only. Yes, Fazan, if Lessi would have paid, then we would have considered it. Ahmed, this is a very strange question. How we will be low, we will less or lessy. Now, when you are purchasing a machine, that means you are needing the you are needing machine. So if the company is needing machine, company will always be lessy. There is no possibility that you can be a lessor. You are a company, company uses machine, and you are a lessy. So it's a very strange question. Yes, I'm on no issue in that. Yes, Nabil, obviously you will use the same discount factor at both places. Okay, I uh, am sure that uh, uh, the students who have uh, taken my classes, uh, they wouldn't be confused with this particular point. However, there are some people asking me this point that uh, if lease payment is in zero, one, two, three, and tax is in arrears, so why is 20% saving of 1200 not coming here? This one here, why you are starting from year two? Now it's a great logic behind this. There's a great logic behind this, and I want you that people who don't know this logic, they can uh, take it. You see, it's a four year life. Okay. And uh, the lease payment 
is 6,000 per year. So officially the lease payment should have been like this, 6,000 per year. For year one, 6,000 cost, year two, 6,000 cost, year three, 6,000 cost, year four, 6,000 cost. Officially it should have been like this because uh, lease payment is 6,000 per year. So for year one, it should be 6,000, for year two, it should be 6,000, for year three, it should be 6,000, for year four, it should be 6,000. And the problem was these payments were made at the start of year one. They were made at the start of year one. This payment was officially made at the start of year one. This payment was made officially at the start of year one. Because NPV calculations have a problem, they don't have discount factors for year start calculation. NPV calculations have a problem. They don't have discount factors for year start calculation. Therefore, anything at the start of the first year was recorded in previous year but taxation authorities don't consider this problem. They say it's your problem. That this 6,000 was made at year one start. You had a problem, NPV had a problem that uh, it was at the start of year one, so we recorded in zero. But in reality, it was at the start of year one. You recorded in zero because of your problem. In our eyes, it's at the start of year one. So if there is no delay in taxation, we will give 20%, 1200 benefit in same year. And if taxation is in areas, we will give 20% benefit, 1200 in year two. That's why payment is being shown in zero, but the benefit is being shown in year two. Repeat, this 6,000, lease rental of year one was officially paid at the start of year one right it's written at the start of the year so start of year one your npv calculations have a problem that they don't have discount factors for year start therefore we recorded it at the end of previous year in zero but we just recorded it in the year zero officially it was at the start of year one so taxation authorities say we won't consider your problem it was a cut at the start of year one so since there is areas we will give benefit in year two okay Hassan, it's not possible to use different discount factors at both places. Either compare it with 4% or 8%. You cannot use different discount factors at both places. I'm at the class fill in when this question is over. Part B of this question, discuss two reasons other than possible after-tax cost advantages, why Hawker may choose to lease rather than buy. So basically, you just need to mention two reasons why Hawker may choose to lease rather than buy. 
again i will write the points and a person copies the points and for your help shares on the group don't make fun of him okay there was too much uh, taunting going on with each other in the group that's why i have restricted the messaging portion in that so two reasons obviously i will just try the reasons and elaborate uh, them and you can elaborate it on your own and read the examiner answer must people are asking where is the examiner answer you should know it's on the website so discuss two reasons other than after tax cost advantages no need to mention cost advantages that leasing is cheaper other than cost advantages two reasons why we choose to lease rather than buy. okay so one reason why hawker may choose to lease rather than buy whole cash is not injected once okay in buying all cash goes at once in leasing whole cash doesn't go how you can elaborate it this is advantages for the company that if you keep cash with the itself rather than investing whole cash in the machine you can invest this cash somewhere else to earn benefit you can invest this cash somewhere else to earn benefit so this uh, can be one advantage why a company chooses uh, leasing that uh, whole cash is not injected once you can save cash and generate uh, income by using that cash okay second can take advantage of technological technological changes you see if you buy a machine and suddenly technology changes if you buy a machine and suddenly technology changes what do you can do you have bought it you can do nothing but if you have taken something on lease and suddenly technology changes you can eliminate the lease contract and go for the new machine so these are the two good reasons why a company may choose leasing rather than buying you can write these two points and any other points are most welcome so much uh, instructions by students immediately go to the next part please quickly finish the class another message why i'm not understanding why okay last part now before ending the class
discuss three advantages of using NPV rather than IRR. It's a golden requirement that three advantages of using NPV over IRR, okay? You can directly uh, learn them from the book. Remember, this is not a case study requirement. It's just a random requirement. Discuss three advantages of using NPV over IRR. So in the study text, there are advantages of NPV, disadvantages of NPV, advantages of IRR, disadvantages of IRR, okay? So you have to write three advantages of NPV over IRR. In the text it's mentioned, NPV is an absolute measure. Absolute measure means value-based measure. Whereas IRR is a relative measure. Relative measure means percentage-based measure. NPV gives answers in dollars, whereas IRR gives answer in percentage. Remember, the real dollar value is always more easy to understand for a person. If I tell you that a project is generating return of dollar 2000, you will understand it easily. But if I say a project is generating return of 10%, you won't understand it easily because you will start thinking a project is generating 10% return of what? Of sales, of costs, of profits, of investments, so many questions. But if I say that project is generating return of dollar 10,000, no other question. Everybody is clear with it. So NPV has an advantage, it is an absolute measure. IRR is a relative measure, okay? First advantage of NPV over IRR. NPV has a proper approach. Record all inflows, record all outflows, a proper approach. IRR is a trial and error approach. You see what you're doing in IRR. First NPV at 10%, then randomly increase discount factor to 15% to get the second NPV or reduce it by 3% to get the positive NPV. It has a trial and error approach. It has no formal approach, whereas NPV has a straightforward and formal approach, okay? Okay, so this is also an advantage of NPV over IRR that it has a straightforward fixed approach. IRR is a trial and error approach. Some people increasing by 5% to get the other NPV, others increasing by 6%, no formal method. Okay. Third advantage, a project always has one NPV, but it can have multiple IRRs. Now, whenever you calculate NPV of project, there has always been one NPV, okay? Either positive or negative. But uh, projects usually have more than one IRRs, especially in case of non-conventional cash flows. And when there are more than one IRRs, it obviously makes it difficult for the person to take decision. So these are the three advantages. Again, my advice is read the examiner answer to get a more crystal clear idea, okay? So today's class uh, has uh, ended now. And if there are any questions, I will be here for the next five minutes to answer them. We will meet uh, in the next class now, okay? And uh, please ask any questions if you have, thank you.
uh jawad as far as uh, your solution is concerned your question is concerned there is no deep exploration to path c it's just uh, a rote learning thing advantages and of disadvantage of npv ir it's not a conceptual requirement it's a learning requirement yes fazan you are right maria the whatsapp group links have been shared and Irshad, I told you that uh, whatever you are expecting, that cannot be taught, okay? Because this class uh, is uh, doing past papers and revision. If you have problem in any area and you want to discuss separately, you should message me on WhatsApp. Sanaula, please message me on WhatsApp. Yes, Vanya. Sana, just read uh, the uh, examiner answers. That's uh, the best strategy. Those who have been unable to join the WhatsApp group, uh, I have shared my number. Please message me on WhatsApp. We will add them. Okay. I have shared my number. Please message me on that number. Trial and error approach. I'm not, it's trial and error approach. Okay, then see all. Any further questions we can discuss on WhatsApp. Thank you.